Hi everyone, my name is Wolfgang and welcome to this series on mind skills. You know they say the older you get, there are two things that happen in your life. The first is, your memory goes. The second is, uh, I forgot. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm going to teach you some basic skills to improve your memory. And today we are going to work on how to remember lists. So let's see what it's all about. Right, I'm going to name a number of things to you. And basically I want you to see if you can remember them. It's as easy as that, okay? So uh, uh, let's say I'm going to name a gun, a shoe, a tree, a door, a, a beehive, a sticks, heaven. What about a gate, a mine, um, a hen? Now, when you talk to people about memory training, people always think we think in abstracts and numbers, but we don't, because we think in pictures. If you think about it, if you think about your boyfriend or your girlfriend, do you see X, Y squared, Z? No. Huh? You see a picture of this attractive person. Okay? So we think in pictures. That's important to realize that. Now, the 10 things, I said 10 things earlier on. I want you now to see what you can remember. Write down what you can remember in the order I told you. What was number one? What was number three? What was number five? Go for it. Don't look at each other's work. Okay? At home, I want you to do exactly the same. See if you can remember those 10 things. It's important for you to do that and then to see how the follow-on works. Gun. Gun, shoe, tree. Um, shoot the gun on the milk. Gun. Uh, shoe, tree, heaven, gun, milk, no, no, milk, no, bun, shoot, uh, shoe, uh. gun, shoe, tree, door, hive, sticks, heaven, gate, mine, Hen. No, hen is ten. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder how many of you at home got more than three right. If you did, very good. Now, how does it work? I'm using a simple mnemonics system, they call it. The ten words that I name to you make complete logical sense. They actually rhyme with the numbers one to ten. Number one, I said gun. One and gun rhyme. Number two, I said shoe. Two and shoe rhyme. Uh, duh. <laughs> okay, three and tree rhyme, four and door. That's really stupid now, isn't it? Okay, right. But basically what happens is to get things into your mind is very easy. But to get them out of your mind is very difficult, to find them again. So you have to create a filing system within your mind. Because of time restraints, I'm going to stick to just a 10 file system. These are going to be our 10 mind files. So file number one in your mind where you're going to store information is going to be gun. It's a picture of a gun. You can see it. File number two is shoe. Okay. Three is tree. Four is door. Right, so those are pictures. So you can see them. What you have to do now is think in your mind that you have 10 files. And file number one, it's called number one, but it's a picture of a gun. Two is shoe. That's it. See that. For this exercise, assume we need to go to the shop and buy a number of things. Name any one item to me. Bun. Bun. All oh, right. Now, that's the first thing I have to buy is a bun. So that's the number one item. So I've got to put it into my file number one. Yes? What is the picture for my file number one? Is a gun. Now, I see the gun and I see the bun. Now, I've got to put the two together in a stupid, ridiculous, funny way which involves action, which could never be real. For example, me shooting the bun, boom, 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 down the grass or something, okay? That's ridiculous. But I see myself shooting that bun all over the place, okay? Which you'd never do, right? So now, name another item. So the first thing was the bun, okay? Like that. Name another item for me. Milk. Milk, okay, milk. Number two, my mind file, number, uh, the milk is the second thing. What is number two? Shoe. So milk and shoe, put them together in a ridiculous, crazy way. Got any suggestions? 
It's easy. You could wash the shoe in the milk. Wash the shoe in the milk, yeah. Or pour the milk in the shoe and try and get it on and uh, there's milk everywhere. Okay? It's weird, right? But now you do that, right? So that is milk. So we're putting, we're washing the shoe in milk. More is always a bit better if you add more crazy things. Washing it in there or pouring milk in the shoe and putting your foot in there. Name another item we need to get. An apple. An apple, okay? So the man file for number three is apple. I mean, it's tree. Tree is tree and apple. Now you have to be careful here because an apple tree is something that is logical, not so. If your correlation is logical, you won't remember it. It's got to be crazy. It's got to be illogical. So now what I would do is the illogical, I would see myself ripping the tree out of the ground and hitting the apple the whole time, okay? That's stupid, but that makes it crazy. So you've actually got to see yourself doing it, lifting the tree up, hitting the apple, right? Okay, name me another thing. Honey. Honey, okay. So our fourth one is honey. Now, um, the, the mind file for number four is a door. Now, any suggestions to mix the two in a crazy way? Painting the door in honey, okay? You would never do that, okay? And as you open it, you stick, uh, you know, onto the door, or you can't get your hand off, whatever, and all the bees are attacking you. You just add a lot of crazy things in. But so it's the door, is full of honey, you're sticking to it, there are bees everywhere. It's a crazy correlation, it involves action. That's important, action and crazy. Now that we've done that, let's see how is this going to make you remember all those things you need to remember. Let's get rid of our list now. Okay, you have arrived at the supermarket. Okay, you don't have a list on you, you've got to remember those 10 items. So the first thing you go is to file number one in your mind. What is the picture for file number one? A gun. What were you doing with the gun? Shooting you. So what must we get? A pun. Okay. Now file number two was shoe. What was happening there? No. You're pointing. Are you going to get milk? Duh. Isn't that easy? You see? Now three was a tree. What were you doing with the tree? Ripping it and hitting an apple. You've got to get apples. Number four was a door. What were you doing with the door? It had honey on it. You were sticking it. They get honey. Can you see how it makes sense now? That's why the more ridiculous your correlation, the easier it is to remember. So you just add anything into those 10 mind files, have crazy correlations. You just think of that and boom, there's the stuff you've got to remember. It's as easy as that. And we'll see you next time with a totally new mind skill to learn. Hi and welcome to Mind Skills. Today we are going to learn how to remember names. My name's uh, uh, Wolfgang. Okay, right. Just kidding. Today I'm really going to show you a really unique and simple way to remember somebody's name when you meet them. Because what happens nowadays, you meet someone, they tell you their name, and before they've even finished saying it, you've forgotten it. So how do you prevent that from happening? That's what I'm going to teach you today. Right, you meet somebody for the first time. What do you do? How do you approach them? How do you remember their name? So we've got a number of students with us today and I'm going to show you a nice method which will increase the probability of you always remembering that name. I've never met any of them before, so I'm going to pick on somebody at random, let's say, um, oh, such a big choice. Okay, you laughing a lot. What's your name? Karen. Karen. Okay, how do you spell that? With a C or a K? With a K, Karen, double R, one R. Okay. Now, what did I do? I've never met Karen before. I looked at her. I said, hi, what's your name? She said, Karen. So I heard it. Okay. Now I repeated her name. Oh, Karen. So I heard it from within myself. Then I asked her something about her name. How do you spell it? Where does it come from? Whatever. So in this short introduction to her, I heard her name three times, okay? Normally when we meet somebody, they say their name, you go, uh-huh, and you don't concentrate. But by me looking at her and making sure that I 
hear or say her name at least three times, don't you agree it's logical that I have a better chance of remembering her name? Yes, because why don't we remember someone's name? Because as we're speaking to them and they say it once, we're thinking of uh, the party we were at last night or the school assignment we've got tomorrow. We're not focusing our attention on that person. So now by forcing myself to focus on Karen and hear her name three times, it's only logical that I'll remember her name much easier. Makes sense. That's one technique. Now, how else can you remember somebody's name? First of all, do you agree that when you meet somebody for the first time, there's always something that stands out, something you notice about that person? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So whether they're tall, short, fat, thin, blonde, dark, whatever, there's something. Whether they've got colorful clothing on, whether they've got an earring on, whether they've got glasses, whether they're bald, there's always something you notice first, right? If you see them in two weeks time again, that's the same thing you will notice again. You agree with that? Makes sense, right? So when you see somebody for the first time, let me take somebody with like distinctive characteristics here. You, okay? When I see you, I see the orangey hair, okay? That, that you stand out, definitely. If I see you in two weeks time, unless you change the color, that's what I'll see, right? Now, I've never met you before. What is your name? Donna. Donna, okay. Now I take her name, and I make a picture out of her name. Donna. Has anybody got a picture they can make out of the name Donna? Madonna. Excellent. Can be a famous person, so Madonna. So now I've got a picture of her name, Donna, okay, and she's got red hair. Now I take the red hair and I take the Madonna picture and I associate them in a stupid, ludicrous, crazy, mad way. Okay, so I see, for example, mind you, Madonna would be on stage with red hair. Okay, that's logical, right? So I see maybe Madonna on stage spray painting her hair orange, which I don't think she would do, okay, right? Now that's a crazy picture, okay? Now in future, any person I meet whose name's Donna, my picture for that will always be Madonna, okay? So now, when I see Donna again, what happens is the first thing I do is I see her, I see the red hair. Because I made this crazy association earlier on that I saw Madonna spray painting her hair orange, that's the first picture that comes in my mind. So I go, Madonna, oh, Donna. Does that make sense to you? It's easy, isn't it? It's really as simple as that. Okay, let's take another name. Hi, and what's your name? Aline. Aline, that's a nice different name. How do, what picture do I make of Aline? Sorry? A lane. A lane on the road. Okay? Now, what's the first thing I notice about him? Now, he's dressed really cool in jeans and a jacket. There's nothing that really... He's a tall guy. Okay? Now, what, are, what else do I notice about him? What stands out? What do you notice about a lane? Anything that, that's unique that you're going to notice about him the next time? No? I notice that um, he's got a polo shirt which has got the straps over here. I look at other things. He's got dark brown eyes. Okay? I pick up on a few more things, and I hope you know that, but still I've got to make a correlation with a lane, okay? So now I'm like, uh -huh, what else is going to work for me? Okay, let me, for, for this example, say I'm going to work on the polo shirt with the lines in it, with the blue lines in his collar, right? So now I take a lane, and I take a polo shirt with blue lines and associate them in a crazy, stupid, ridiculous way. How do I do that? Have you got any suggestions? No, the lanes on the road are white and blue, and, the, 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 and there's polar shirt designs all over the road. So it's, it's a crazy thing. I'm driving, and I'm like, now, w which lane am I in? Okay, because the polar shirts are everywhere, and there are lines everywhere. It's got to be crazy and ridiculous. So now, again, when I see that, I see those lines, I think of a lane. Ah, it's a lane. Makes sense. It's really simple. The most difficult thing with this is the first time somebody says their name, you have to make a picture. So in, initially, think of all the people you know, their names, and think of pictures, because the pictures never change. Like the mind files we had once, right? Now you're thinking of names, so if it goes to Tony, Wendy, John, Peter, Thomas, whatever, you have pictures, and then you just associate them in a ridiculous way. It's as easy as that. Yes? Let's do someone else. At home, I want you to try this as well. Think of the people you know. When you see people in the streets, take note of how they look, what they're wearing, and home in on that. And it literally takes a bit of concentration. You've got that picture, and you know what it's doing? It's forcing you to focus on somebody and pay attention. As I said, with remembering the, or hearing the name three times, it just helps you focus more, and you have to remember better.
I'm Marlene. I'm Tia. Hello, I'm Donna. Hi, I'm Wendy. Hi, I'm Anderson. Hey, my name is Tandy. Hi, I'm Moskva. Hi, I'm Karen. Hi, I'm Megan. Hi, I'm Winnie. Hey, I'm Tree. Hi, I'm Okotu. Right, let's recap very quickly. In future, when you meet someone, the first time, get to hear their names at least three times. And then also, make a picture of somebody's name, focus on something that stands out about that person, get a picture of their name, associate the two in a crazy, ridiculous way, and that will help you remember their names. It's as easy as that. So from me, Wolfgang, thanks for joining us on Mind Skills. Hi everyone, welcome to Memory Skills. My name is Wolfgang and today I'm going to teach you some mathematical skills. Little tips, not really secrets, but basically things that can help you add, subtract, multiply quicker and with which you can impress your friends and teachers. So let's see what it's all about. Right, let's learn how to add faster than with a calculator. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Okay, in school you've learned to add from right to left. Not so? I say forget that, add from left to right. Hmm? Now you're smiling, come on, how can you do that? Look, it's very easy. If we take 36 and 21, okay, that's 57 is the answer, right? Now, how do you learn to do it in school? You go, 6 and 1 is 7, 3 and 2 is 5. But it's much easier if somebody says to you, 37, plus 20, as you hear the 20, the 2, you add that to the 3 is 5, and the 1 you add it 57. You add it the other way around. Let's, for example, take 75 by what uh, 69, okay, like this. If you add that up, you've got to think about it. But how about just rounding a number off? Round that off to 70. Makes it 145 minus the 1 you've just added makes it 144. Isn't that easy? So that makes it much faster, and you're actually adding from left to right. Does that make sense to you or not? So it's for you now to go and take various examples and try them for yourself. And what you do is your friends need to say numbers to you. And they say 25 plus, think about it, when you touch a calculator, you go 2, 5 plus 3, 7. So that's what they say 25 plus 3, oh, yes, 3 and 2, and you add up. And that's how you practice it. You become really fast. What about three digit numbers? Uh, let's see. 429 plus, uh, let's say, 348. Okay, really easy is 777. Okay, wow, how do you add up so quickly? It's easy. What you do, round them off again. 429, make it a 430, right? 348, make it 350. Okay, if you add, that's much easier to add, don't you agree? So if you add that up, that's 750. 80, but you added 1 there and you added 2 there, that's 3, minus the 3 makes it 777. Does it make sense to you? You're all going, ah, oh. okay, yeah, but it's fun, okay? Let's do one more example to make it easy. Let's say 849 plus uh, 597. There we go. I mean, when you hear that alone, you go, oh, this is crazy. It's 1446, okay? Again, what did I do? I rounded them off. 849, I made 850. And 597, I made 600. Okay, so that gave me 1450 minus um, uh, the 1 and the 3 is 4 minus 4 is 1446. So what you have to do is now sit at home and just try various examples and just try them like that. And it makes such a difference and you become really fast. What about subtraction? 
It's good for you to start practicing that now so you can handle your taxes in later life because you'll be doing a lot of subtracting. Okay, right. Let's again just take two digit numbers. Oh, you think that's funny? You won't think that's funny later on. Don't worry. Okay, let's for example take uh, 79 minus uh, what? 24 like that. Okay, again we're doing from, sorry, 55. Very good. Okay, I like it. You, you see, you're getting the feel of it because you're going from left to right. Because you go, 9 and 5, uh, 4 is 5. That's it. 79, 24 is 5. That's as easy as that. Okay, let's take another one. 76 minus 19. What do you get there? Sorry? Sorry? Come, 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 come. Now you round that off to 20. So it makes it 56, okay? Plus one is 57. It's easy. You see how quick you can do it, right? Let's take another one. Let's say 90, uh, come, 94 minus, make it easy one, 38. There we go, like that. What's the answer? 56, okay? How do we get to that so quickly? Round that off. Make that 40, okay? So that gives you 54 plus the 2 is 56. Go. Okay, right? Let's take longer numbers. Let's make it much longer, okay? And try this at home as well. And use as many examples as you can. And you'll find you really start becoming fast, okay? Let's take a, Let's use another sheet over there because we've done that enough now. What about um, 869? Now, everybody goes, uh oh, three digit numbers, okay? M minus 547, like that. What do we get? Uh, no, 322. What? 869 minus 547. If you were to do it slowly, 9 minus 7 is 2, 6 minus 4 is 2, 8 minus 5 is 3, 320, but that takes too long. So you round it off, make that 870, make that 870, make that 550, okay? So that gives you 320, and because you add, am I right? Am I right? Yeah, 550, 870, that's 320, okay? And then with the 2, you add it at 322. Does that make sense? Yes, you're all just going, yes, this is the coolest audience out. I hope you're doing that at home as well. Okay, let's take another one. 656 over there minus, let's say, 398, like this. What answer do you get? 258. Why? Because I rounded that off. I made that to 400, gave me 256 plus the 2 is 258. Logical, isn't it? So now try that at home with three digit numbers and go from left to right and believe me, you'll have a lot of fun. Now that was really easy stuff. Now I've got stuff that's really cool. Okay? Multiplication. You're all going, ah! Don't worry, I'll make it easy for you. Now, for example, take a two digit number. Take like 89 times 7. You're really going, oh! But you know a quick way of doing that? Go, seven eights. What's seven eights? Five sixty. Okay. Seven nines is sixty-three. Right? Now add those two together. What do you get? Six hundred and twenty-three. It's a much faster way of doing it like that. Okay? We also all know that one. But let's do something with a difficult number. For example, multiply something by eleven. Mm. For example, thirty-two by eleven is three hundred and fifty-two. Give me a number, any two-digit number. Sorry? 64. You sure you want that? 64. That's really easy because that's 704. Okay? How'd you do it? <laughs> it's really cool. If you've got any number by 11, let's say 25 by 11, you take the 2 and the 5, you add them together, it's 7, you put it in the middle. That's the answer. Ooh. Yeah, look, 25. You add the 2 plus the 5, gives you 7, and you put the 7 in the middle. It's 275. Okay, now check that out. Okay, you can check. I, I, I love it when you don't trust me. Look, okay, let's take it out. What you said earlier on, 64. Okay, we had 64. Now this is the catchy one. Because 6 and 4 is 10. You can't put 10 in the middle. But you can, but you carry. So the 6 plus 4 is 10. So you put the naught in the middle. You carry the 1 to the 6, make it 7. 704. Wow, isn't that easy? So you try, you try, I mean, it's, look, look, 11 times 11, 1 and 1 is 121, the 2 is in the middle. It's as easy as that. However, you can now, I mean, you do it all in your mind without a calculator, blow them away. But how about you get a really long number? For example, let's take a number like uh, 641. How does that work by 11? Because now, where, where do you add, where do you put what in the middle? Okay, would you like to know? Okay, what you do, now times that by 11, okay, you work 
from the right hand side first. First of all, because it's by 11, the last number will always remain the way it is because it's times 1. So you put a 1, you always put a 1. Now you add the 4 and the 1 is 5, you put the 1 there, the 6 and the 4 is 10, so you put the 0 there and carry the 1 is 7, 7051. Okay, see how quick you can do it. You can do it without a calculator. Let's take a longer number. Let's take a number, for example, 701543. Uh, uh, I mean, whoa, that, now that's heavy math, that, okay? Make it easy. Look, times that by 11, right? What did I say you do with the last number? You keep it. So you put 3 is the answer. 4 and 3 is 7, right? 4 and 5 is 9. 5 and 1 is 6. Norton 1 is? 1. one. Okay, Norton 7 is? Seven. 7, right? And the last 7, there. So 7716973, seven, that is your answer. See how easy it is to multiply something by 11? Yes. Would it be cool to be able to do that with 12 as well? Yes. Oh, okay, right. Let's do a big number using 12. And in fact, there it's very similar, except the principle is slightly different, okay? Let's take 413 by 12 times 12. If you're using a three-digit number, the only rule here is you've got to put a naught in front of it, okay? That will help you out a lot more, right? Now what you do, because the two is the last digit, that means that the last digit of the number must be doubled. Does that make sense to you? So that becomes a six. The three becomes a six. It makes sense to you? Yes? I've got to look at you all are following me on this one. And you following me at home? Remember, you must go and try this. It's a lot of fun. And you're really going to impress your friends with it. Okay? Right. Now we've done that. Okay. Now you've got to double all the numbers. So you make the, that a two plus the three is five. Okay? Now you double that one. is eight plus one is nine. Okay, you got that, and then the 4, you can't double that, plus the 4 is 4. So that's your answer. Does it make sense? Let's do a long number as well, then you've got it, okay? So let's take any number, 6, 3, 2, 4, 7. Okay, there we go, 6, 3, 2, 4, 7 by 12. Whoa. Okay, let's try that. You double the last number. 14. Four, ah, now it gets interesting, doesn't it? 4, carry the 1. Keep the one. Keep the one there. Okay. Now you double that is 8 plus 7 is 15 plus the one is 16. So you put the 6 there, you carry the one. Okay. So that's double that is 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Okay. So that you double this one is 6 and 2 is 8. Does that make sense to you? Right. Okay. And have you, have you got, come, you figure out the last two for me. Now it's getting tough, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. That's 12 and 3 is 5. 5 carry 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7, 5, 8, 9, 6, 4. So you see those are simple, quick solutions to multiply quickly and impressively. And that's easy to do. And I trust that you at home are going to go and try that and go back to school and blow the minds of everybody and really impress your teachers. That's how simple it is. Wow, see how easy it is to do maths? Now all you have to do is go home and practice a little bit and then in a few days time you're going to be a maths whiz, genius, whatever and impress everyone in your school. So from me Wolfgang, thanks for joining us on Memory Skills. Hi and welcome to Mind Skills. My name is Wolfgang and I have got a challenge for you. I've got this massive paragraph of useless information, which when you see it you'll go, oh no. But if I can make you learn that pat off within three, four minutes, would that impress you? Yes. You're going to be impressed. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how right now. Over here I have a whole page of information. Almost makes you get into shock 
as when you open your textbook and go, oh, no, I could have learned all this, okay? So let's, let me read this to you once, and especially you at home, listen very carefully, and listen to the story I'm going to read to you. You'll realize it's a lot of nonsense, but see what you can remember. A pink elephant dressed in a purple spotted white t-shirt, jumping on a pogo stick in a brown camping tent jumps into a luminous green cold drink bottle and lands on a flea dressed in a tuxedo playing the harp to the tune of the green green grass of home. He bounces off the flea landing in a blue lake sinking to the bottom passing a silver hammerhead shark smoking a pipe with cherry tobacco. The elephant lands into a yellow 4x4 jeep with green mag wheels and gold trimmings. Are you following this so far? Okay. He now drives off into the desert over two blue sand dunes, encountering a herd of five lions that are white in color. They are brushing their teeth with a transparent toothbrush and rainbow striped toothpaste. The brushing causes a rainbow to appear and the elephant drives up the rainbow on the pink lane with the lions trailing behind on the green lane. They slip on an orange bar of soap and fall off the rainbow doing backward somersaults while the lion drives off into a pot of gold. Now, that is the most ridiculous story you've heard in your life, isn't it? Yeah. There were a lot of facts here, different colors, things. How long would that take you to remember? Quite a long time. I can teach that to you within the next three minutes. Okay, how does one do that? Let's have a look at it. Whatever you have to study, you have to understand. Okay? And you have to make a summary of it. Make one word, a few words which tell you the whole story. And that's exactly the way you are going to learn this story. The first thing is the elephant. Not so, right? It says here the elephant. It's a pink elephant. He's dressed in a purple spotted white t-shirt, a white t-shirt with purple spots. What is he doing? He's jumping on a pogo stick in a brown camping tent. So that's the one thing. That's all to do with the elephant. So now you use your five senses and picture the elephant in your mind. So picture him. What do you see? He's in pink in color. He's got a white t-shirt with purple spots. He's jumping on a pogo stick in a brown camping tent. Okay, so now if you think of elephant, because see him, hear him squeaking on the pogo stick, okay, see the tight-fitting t-shirt, okay, right, picture him, right, see him, smell him, picture the whole thing using your senses. So now when you think of elephant, you immediately think of all that. Now what happened? He jumped on the pogo stick into a bottle. Bottle is your next key word. What was the bottle? It was luminous green. And when he landed inside, what happened? He landed on a flea. Now what was the flea? Picture the flea. He was wearing a tuxedo, he was playing a harp. What was he playing? Oh, the green, green grass of home. Okay, right. So now you've got two key words already, elephant and bottle. So because you visualize and see the thing in your mind's eye, okay, you've got the picture of how the elephant looked, a pink, white t-shirt, purple spots, pogo stick, brown camping tent, right? Jumped into a luminous green cold drink bottle, very important, what kind of bottle? Ask yourself those questions. A cold drink bottle, okay? Inside, flea. What was the flea wearing? Tuxedo. What was he doing? Playing the uh, harp. What was the song? Green, green grass of gra um, um, home, okay? Now what happened? He bounced off the flea, landed into a lake. What was the color of the lake? Blue lake. Landed into blue lake. He was sinking down. Now you look at the lake, sink down. What happened in the lake? Ah, he went past the shark. A silver hammerhead shark. What was the shark doing? Smoking a pipe with cherry tobacco. You see this? I mean, picture yourself diving in there's a silver hammerhead shark smoking a pipe with tobacco. Put yourself in the action. Be lewd, okay? Right, so you've seen that. What happened when he went past? He fell into a, a jeep, a 4x4 four four jeep. What was the color of the jeep? Yellow. It was a yellow jeep. And what, what other distinguishing factors? Had green mag wheels, okay? Now see the green and gold trimmings. Okay, now he was in the jeep. What did he do? He drove off. Where? Into the desert. Over two blue sand dunes. And when he got over the last one, see yourself doing this. What did he see? Five white lions. What were they doing? Brushing their teeth with transparent toothbrushes. And what was the color of the toothpaste? Rainbow colored toothpaste. Okay, as they were doing that, what did it cause? A 
rainbow. And the elephant then drove off up the pink lane, and the lions followed him on the green lane. They fell off, but they slipped on something. So, orange, so. And when they fell, they did backward somersaults. And the elephant drove off into a pot of gold. Now, can you see what you're doing is you're understanding the story and you're visualizing it. So now you write down your key words. Here are the key words over here. So we have elephant, bottle, lake, jeep, lions, and rainbow. That's all I remember. That's what I remember. So now I look at elephant. What do I remember? White white t-shirt with purple spots. What's the elephant doing? A pogo stick. Wow, you've remembered half that or a third of that paragraph. He landed into a bottle. Luminous green cool drink bottle. Inside was? Flea. What's the flea doing? Dressed in a tuxedo, playing a harp. What song? Green, green, green. You guys are so cool. This is crazy. This is no. Right, then he bounced off and he landed in a blue lake, sinking down. Silver hammerhead shark. Okay? Smoking a cherry tobacco pipe. And then he fell into a yellow 4x4 four four Jeep, green mag wheels, gold trimmings. He drives a Jeep off into the desert over what? Two blue sand dunes. As he gets over that last second sand dune, what does he see? Five lions. What were they doing? Transparent toothbrushes, rainbow toothpaste. Causing a rainbow. The elephant rode up it on the pink. on the pink one. The lines follow him on which one? Green, Green one. They slip on something. Orange soap. soap. And did it? And the, and the elephant, the elephant the pot, pot of gold. You've all said it on your own. In how long? In three minutes. But what did you do? You understood what you read. You visualize it in your mind using your five senses. You made six keywords, and those keywords brought that back. And because you used your own senses and pictured yourself in that action and you understood it, that's why you can remember it so easy. And if all studying is done like that, man, you can study like anything. So you've got a great new mind skill.